I have never thought this day would come ever, but here we are. I used to be that person, that customer who would literally analyze every single ingredient in the skincare product in order to make my purchasing decision. That ingredient label was everything for me to determine if the product will perform well or not. But as I started working closer with cosmetic chemists, formulators, and just learning more from the scientist community on Instagram, which is really amazing by the way, I soon realized that I was making a really big error. I was jumping to conclusions without knowing the entire context of the entire formulation. Nitpicking on individual ingredients and avoiding the entire product just because it does seem to contain an ingredient that seems to be problematic or irritating or just unsafe, it really wasn't a science-based move. Ingredient scanning platforms like CosDNA, Huahe, EWG, like these have really empower the customers to become more educated, to become more aware of what we are applying topically, and it really pushed the beauty industry to become more transparent as well. It oversimplified the complex world and the art of chemistry, the art of formulation, how ingredients react when they are mixed together. And it made us demonize certain ingredients forever. It made us look at ingredients and label it black and white good or bad. And to be honest, I'm really guilty of this too. Here's what the ingredient label doesn't tell you. The kind, the source, the quality of the ingredient, and also how it is processed. Take a look at this. This is a seaweed, this is a seaweed, and this is also called a seaweed. It all comes from different source, it's different quality, and it went through different kind of processing. But at the end of the day, this is all going to have the same inky name called seaweed. Here's another example similar to that. We're gonna take a look at a zinc oxide close-up. Now, Zinc oxide is one of the mineral filters that we often use for sunscreens. Every supplier has a different kind of zinc oxide. This is a zinc oxide from supplier A, and this is another zinc oxide molecule from the same supplier. Depending on which kind of zinc oxide the cosmetic chemist, the formulator, choose to use, it will have and offer a different kind of formulation, a different kind of product experience, and even a different SPF rating eventually. This is another great example. Let's look at these three different products. Product A, a more Pacific Vintage Single Extract Essence. Product B, Innisfree Green Tea Seed Essence. Product C, Laneige Cream Skin Refiner. Let's find one common ingredient across all three products. Green Tea Extract. Now, all of these products are manufactured from the same parent company called Amore Pacific Group. High chance they might be using the same green tea extract, but let's take a look. A more Pacific Vintage Essence contains a green tea from the Dorsongi Garden that provides a significant amount of catechins and it goes through another 100 days of natural fermentation process and then eventually goes through another 24 hours of very slow brewing extraction processing. Let's take a look at the green tea that Innisfree Green Tea Seed Essence uses. They are using the green tea from the farm in Korea's Jeju Island. They use a compound of green tea leaves that they call Beauty Green Tea, and it was selected from 3,301 varieties. They're rich in 16 hydrating amino acids, and the organic leaves are plucked from the stem, steamed for 30 seconds to retain nutrients, and pressed. The extract is then stabilized for freshness and purified for safe application to the skin. We then double squeeze the moisture from the leaves instead of creating a classic infusion in order to best capture their skincare benefits. Now, very different from the more Pacific Vintage Single Extract Essence. Finally, let's take a look at the green tea extract in Laneige Cream Skin Refiner. Interestingly, they call their green tea a white leaf tea. They created an environment where they can control and regulate the UV exposure to the green tea leaves so that the amino acid is much more abundant than the just regular green tea leaf. Now you get the hang of it. Every green tea extract is not created equally. Just because multiple different products share a same inky name, it doesn't mean that they're gonna have the same benefits, the same type of skincare properties or product experience. Here's another thing that the ingredient label doesn't tell you. It's basically how the ingredients are formulated together. And in simple terms, it's how the ingredients are cooked together. Just because I was given the same cooking ingredients as 
Gordon Ramsay. The, the final outcome of my dish is not going to be equivalent to what Gordon Ramsay has cooked with the same ingredients. Same with skincare. A really good example to this is alcohol. Denatured alcohol is easily demonized because, you know, it can be a really drying, stripping ingredient without adding any other skincare benefits. To be honest, why use denatured alcohol? I used to just the ditch or not choose products just because the denatured alcohol was really high up in the ingredient list. However, one product completely shifted my perspective to viewing the entire formulation and respecting the formulation over just the sum of individual ingredients. And that is La Roche-Posay Hialu B5 serum. It's supposed to be a hyaluronic acid based hydrating serum. It has denatured alcohol really high up in the list. However, I have never come across another syrupy and hydrating, a serum that is so good at retaining hydration than that single hyaluronic acid product. Of course, some alcohol based toners are supposed to be really drying, really stripping, but again, you can't really judge the product based on the ingredient list. Same with SLS and SLES. Now, Dr. Anke has a really, really good explanation to this. In the context of a formulation, a single ingredient doesn't equal the formulation as a whole. So what does that mean? It means that an ingredient by itself can have a certain property. Let's say it's irritating if you put it on your skin by itself. But in a formulation and combined with other ingredients, it can actually change its properties and by that add to the product without leaving the product with irritant properties. One of my favorite examples are SLS and SLES, the two sulfate-based surfactants that so many people are looking for on their cleanser inky lists at the moment. And if it's on there, they categorically won't use it because they think it's gonna be harsh or drying or it's gonna be irritating. But actually, both SLS and SLES, when combined with what we call a secondary surfactant, can be formulated in a way so that they can even be used for sensitive skin. And unless you know what a secondary surfactant is and where to find that on your inky list, or you have a good conversation with the formulator who made the product, simply by looking for SLS and SLES on the inky list, you won't know if your product is actually going to be harsh or not. And there's plenty of examples just like that. As you've learned from Dr. Anke's response, the formulation matters a lot more. The dose of ingredients and how the ingredients are cooked together, the delivery system, and etc. etc. Now, another brilliant cosmetic chemist, Jen from the EcoWell, gives another response to this. Ingredient lists were first mandated in cosmetics to inform consumers about potential allergens. If you have a known sensitivity to an ingredient, these lists will help make your life a bit easier. Unfortunately, with all of the chemophobia out there, the double-edged sword of these lists is that it's become so easy and common to fearmonger individual ingredients. It's very normal to fear what you don't understand. Ingredient lists that look the same may have two very different formulas in the bottle with respect to texture, performance, feel, and so on. You can think about it like if you were to bake a cake. How much vanilla, salt, and sugar did you add? How did you mix the ingredients? How hot and for how long did you bake the cake? How and where did you apply the icing? All of these things will make a big difference in how that cake tastes. The same logic applies to your cosmetics. Formulation matters a lot more than the individual ingredients. And to those fear-mongered ingredients, think parabens, fragrance, SLS, and so on, used inappropriately, you might run into issues. But following sound formulation principles, you can make a very gentle product that will be tolerated by most people. For example, with fragrance. Using too high of a concentration, irritancy and allergenicity may be a problem. Following IFRA guidance in appropriate concentrations, these risks will be seriously reduced. Ultimately, it rarely makes sense to look at the inky list for one ingredient unless you have a known sensitivity. If you're vegan and want to use ingredients without animal products, that of course makes sense as well. But in most cases, formulation context is greater than the sum of its parts. I hope that was enlightening because it certainly was to me. So thank you so much to Jen and thank you so much to Dr. Anke 
for sharing your wisdom with us. I hope you know where I'm going with this. Just because a product contains coconut oil, like a really poor clogging ingredient, it doesn't mean the final product is going to be also poor clogging. It could be either super lightweight or it could be really thick and buttery depending on how the ingredients are cooked together. So what's the point? I definitely think it's still right to look at ingredient lists, especially if you're allergic to a specific ingredient. If you are looking for a specific active ingredient, it will tell you exactly which active ingredient is used, but it really wouldn't tell what the end result or the product experience is gonna be. So what I wanna say is to trust your experience more. Trust how the product feels and performs on the skin. Rely on other customers' reviews and their experience. As always, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and like this video and yeah, I hope to see you again soon. Bye.